that India-Canada relations have hit an all-time low would be an understatement. Fact is, the unprecedented meltdown of the last two days perhaps has only one parallel. India's frosty ties with Pakistan, an enemy state. Things are clearly spiralling out of control. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has doubled down on his charges against India. He says he has spoken to his Five Eyes allies about the issue. The police in Canada are now claiming a Bishnoi gang angle to the Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar murder case. The two countries have expelled each other's top diplomats in a tit-for-tat move. Blistering statements are being issued at a rapid pace and a bitter bling game is on. Let's take an in-depth look at how diplomatic ties between India and Canada have not only soured but plunged to rock bottom. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau held a press conference on Monday, reiterating his accusations of India supporting criminal activity against Canadians and coercive behaviour targeting South Asian Canadians. Trudeau claims that agents of the Government of India were involved in the killing of Nijar, a Canadian citizen, in June last year. The Canadian Prime Minister has said he has shared information about the accusations with the Five Eyes partners, particularly the United States. In fact, the Trudeau government has alleged a wider campaign of the Indian government with organised crime elements in Canada to collect through questionable and illegal means information on Canadian citizens, information which is fed to criminal organizations that then take violent actions from extortion to murder. That is what they are claiming. Trudeau said, I think it is obvious that the government of India made a fundamental error in thinking they could engage in supporting criminal activity against Canadians on Canadian soil. Whether it's murders or extortion or other violent acts, it's absolutely unacceptable. He went on to say, we shared our concerns with the government of India and asked them to work with us. The requests were repeatedly refused. Sources in India's external affairs ministry have responded to Trudeau's allegations by saying, and I quote, the Canadian Prime Minister's press conference was the same old Trudeau saying the same old things for the same old reasons. The central assertion from all Canadian officials is that credible evidence has been presented to India. This is simply not true. From the very beginning, the Canadian approach has been to make vague accusations and put the burden of denial on India. It is absurd that after intensively engaging the Indian High Commissioner over the last year, the Canadian government now chooses to target him. New Delhi has repeatedly shot down as absurd and motivated the claim that it was linked to the Nijjar murder, saying the Trudeau administration has not shared a shred of evidence with the government of India, despite many requests. Prior to Trudeau's press conference, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, that's the Federal Police in Canada, addressed a press conference, alleging that they had evidence pertaining to connections between a certain number of individuals arrested by them and charged with murder and extortion and the government of India. And then they called on Canadian citizens in this very press conference to come forward if faced with intimidation, harassment, coercion or extortion to obtain information for the government of India. Not only that, they also claimed that agents of New Delhi are working with organised criminals including the Bishnoi gang that was linked to last week's murder of former Maharashtra minister Baba Siddiqui to target the South Asian community, specifically pro-Khalistani elements, in that country. Remember, Canada is claiming that India's top diplomats, including High Commissioner Sanjay Varma, were persons of interest in the Niger murder investigation. Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie yesterday said the government had decided to expel these six Indian diplomats from Canada. India had already announced that it was withdrawing its six diplomats over security concerns. India has also expelled top Canadian diplomats, including the Acting High Commissioner and the Deputy High Commissioner, in the first ever such downgrade of diplomatic ties between the two countries. 
New Delhi said the accusations against its envoy, Sanjay Kumar Verma, were ludicrous and deserve to be treated with contempt, adding that Trudeau's hostility to India has long been in evidence and that his allegations were a strategy of smearing India for political gains. What we have seen in the last two days is an unprecedented escalation in the diplomatic row between the two countries, a row that erupted in September last year when Justin Trudeau first accused the Indian government of involvement in the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijar. The founder of the Khalistani Tiger Force, a designated terror group, Nijar was high on India's most wanted list for multiple crimes including murder. India has time and again accused Canada under the Trudeau dispensation of giving political space and legitimacy to Khalistani extremists, violent elements and anti-India forces. Amidst the snowballing diplomatic tensions, the Washington Post has carried a report claiming that India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval held a secret meeting with his Canadian counterpart in Singapore last week and that the Canadian officials outlined alleged evidence showing that India had enlisted networks of the Lawrence Bishnoi gang to carry out the killing of Nijar and attacks on Sikh separatists. The report, citing anonymous Canadian officials, claimed Ajit Doval initially pretended not to have any idea who Lawrence Bishnoi was, but later the NSA acknowledged that Bishnoi was capable of orchestrating violence from wherever he is incarcerated. Interestingly, in June 2022, it was the Indian High Commission in Ottawa that alerted Canada over the involvement of gangsters operating from its soil in violent crimes in Punjab after the killing of singer Sidhu Musewala. The Lawrence Bishnoi gang had taken responsibility for the killing of the singer. The United States last month summoned the Indian government after another Khalistani terrorist, Gurpatwant Singh Panu, claimed in a civil lawsuit that India was linked to a plot to murder him. The US said it was deeply concerned by the claims and called on New Delhi to take the allegations against it very seriously and investigate. The Indian government set up a high-level committee to probe the charges and now reports say that that very probe committee will soon travel to Washington to discuss with officials of the Biden administration the progress made in their investigation and details of an arrest allegedly made by Indian authorities in this regard. However, fact is the Canadian Prime Minister seems to have made it his personal agenda to repeatedly attack India. His irresponsible statements, vote bank politics and flirtations with extremist elements have caused immeasurable damage to what was once a strong bilateral relationship between India and Canada with strong people-to-people -people ties. What explains Trudeau's growing hostility towards India? Why these ludicrous allegations? Is Trudeau getting increasingly desperate ahead of the elections in Canada in 2025? Is he hoping to revive his sagging political fortunes by making anti-India statements so as to woo the extremist Khalistani and anti-India forces that he is already in bed with? Is he hoping to boost his rapidly plunging approval ratings at home with poll after poll suggesting that his popularity with the Canadian people is at an all-time low? Is he making frantic efforts to make up for the electoral losses that his party suffered in the bypolls this summer, especially in Montreal and Toronto, both Liberal Party fortresses? Remember, Justin Trudeau barely survived two no-confidence motions in September and October after Khalistani separatist Jagmeet Singh, who had propped up Trudeau's minority government, decided to withdraw support. Is Justin Trudeau grasping at straws, sensing an embarrassing defeat in the 2025 elections? Or is he too nervous about his impending appearance before a parliamentary commission where he needs to explain how his government allowed foreign interference in Canadian elections, a reference to China, right under its nose? Whichever way you look at it, Justin Trudeau increasingly looks like a weak, inept, unpopular leader who knows he would soon be riding into the sunset and is therefore resorting to desperate measures in the hope of hiding his own failures by taking cheap pot shots at India. In fact, such is the state of relations between India and Canada today that many are asking, is Canada the new Pakistan? Many also argue that just the way Pakistan became a safe haven for terrorists wanted by India, anti-India elements have found a safe space in Trudeau's Canada.